Hey everyone, and well, happy new year, I guess. I know it's already been two weeks, but I was willing to do this video first, so yeah. We need to talk about the Fuzzified graphic novels, and well, before the actual video starts, very quickly, I did get the physical edition for Fuzzified graphic novel 1. So here's a quick showcase, I guess. The physical edition is pretty cool. I like how the cool looks. You can see the glossy details right there pretty nicely. Here's the art. And this is the old edition with the crappy drawings, but yeah. Oh well. Last week we were supposed to be getting the covers for both the cookbook and Fazer Fred's graphic novel collection volume 3. That did not happen, instead we got this. I was really sad when that happened. I was dead inside for several days. And then both cover drops this morning for some reasons. First of all, here's the cookbook. Look, at least it's not a character in secret page. And here is, finally, the cool font for Fast Fight's graphic novel collection volume 3, which should be depicting hide and seek. It's a bunny comic design. So yeah, for the longest time, as fans, we always thought that the graphic novels would take some stories that did not get cover cool arts and put them as the core cool stories. It made sense for the first two volumes. Volume 1 has Into the Pit, who has a cover in book 1, To Be Beautiful and Out of Stock, both who don't, and they chose Out of Stock. Probably because it's a fun green bunny. Volume 2 has Fetch, a cover story, Room for One More and The New Kid. They went through Room for One More because many readers are marketable boy apparently, instead of Golden Freddy. I don't know. And volume 3 has Step Closer, a cover story, Bunny Call, a cover story, and Hide and Seek, who doesn't have a cover and is the third story in Fast Fight 6 originally. So it was safe to assume that that story would get a cover on, and apparently no. But the thing is that under different circumstances, I would have been a bit pissed off, I'm not gonna lie, because that's such a missed opportunity. Shadow Bunny is a character that's very popular and all. But the thing is that this cover, the one that we got, looks so good and Almost every FNAF fan is a fan of it that I I'm not I don't feel like complaining. It's a cover that makes everyone happy about. So it's not worth hating on it. In fact, I absolutely love it. So yeah, so in this video we're mainly going to be talking about the differences between the original cover art and the new cover art. By that I mean Fast Fight 5 and Graphic Novel Collection Volume 3. That's just for fun. I'm not going to be talking about the cookbook too much because come on. But yeah, it just feels like for this book, they just grab the Fast Fights graphic novel series, grab Fast Fights 5 Bunny Call, and just fuse them together somehow. And we got this. It's cool though, it's really cool. The biggest difference is that is on the new cover is the fact that this Rafa is much more accurate to the original story. And thank god, because the original one, the original one as a cover works. It works perfectly. I think it's an iconic cover. Uh, the proportions are great and all that stuff. In a physical book, it looks really, really good. But from a story accuracy point of view, it's not good. In the story, Rafa is supposed to be human sized. He's supposed to be a costume. But the cover looks like a toy. That's actually a big issue because, well, that's what's advertising. What do you want me to say? The new cover thankfully fixes that. The hands are humanistic and you can see with the proportions of like the fingers, the torso that you can see a little bit under the head, the side of the bow tie and all that stuff. That's really cool to see. I really like that. And you can also see in the middle of the face a seam line for like when it was stitched. That's great. That's really great. Uh, another detail is that the ears are not floppy as they should be instead of upright. And the one thing that most people saw right away and absolutely love the eyes are actually pink instead of the light blue from the original cover. That's great stuff. That's really great. Another thing I noticed personally that I, don't, that I didn't see anyone point out, he has bottom teeth now, which actually makes him look much better in my opinion. The original cover's mouth is a little wonky, it's a little weird. It's like, it's almost like the Pennywise smile, but done completely wrong, if that makes sense. No, really, the new cover is, looks much better. The lighting in the original is very decent, don't get me wrong. But the new one just has much more life, it has, a, it has a bigger scenery, and it works much better than uh, the previous. Another thing I need to point out about the graphic novel cover that I found really cool is the logo. Now yes, it is inconsistent with the previous two books, but I'm willing to let that slide in because it's actually a really cool easter egg. If it's intentional, that's great. The logo takes the original colors from the original cover and, well, puts them in the new cover. The red in Fast Fight Graphic Novel Collection Volume 3 is one side of the original background. The blue 
uh, Final Fantasy Freddy's is on the other side of the background. And the, based on the New York Times bestselling series text, is yellow just like the original Fantasy Fights 5 bunny card text from the original cover. I think that's great, you know, that, and that's a good way to keep the original color scheme because, let's be honest, it looks really good. It's iconic, in my opinion, and it fits. And it makes the cover just a little better to me. You know, Easter eggs like that, little callbacks. That's great stuff. Honestly, I don't really have much to say. It's not like Tales of the Pizza Bex where a new cover means something completely new and stuff, but this was still a fascinating cover to get revealed. We all expected hide and seek. I had planned for the video to be a comparison between the cover and the original hide and seek artwork from the ultimate guide. That's not gonna be a thing now, but a new bunny car cover it is a big surprise, but it's a great surprise. Everyone really likes this one, and I understand that. I think that's really sweet. Apparently, Lady Fitzy drew this one, according to most people. Personally, I can't see it. Well, maybe a little bit in like the cheeks and stuff, but it just looks very different in my opinion in terms of art style which and um, just gives me a hard time to believe that and yeah maybe it is if it is that's really awesome i have to say and that is a huge improvement over the original the book releases on september 5th 2023 and you know what if there's a preview or whatever i might do a video up because in terms of like the lineup of the stories honestly it's the least interesting one to me step closer is not the best story. I like some parts, you know, with the whole accents thing, but stuff like the writing at the ending just made me a little iffy on it. Bunny Call is one of my favorite stories, so I'm totally on point with it, except if it's drawn by Esmeralda, why is she here? And uh, Hide and Seek is one of my least favorite stories of the original Classified series. It's not, <laughs> it's definitely not one I like at all. But in terms of artwork, I'm very interested in it. Diana Camero is returning, if you're not aware she was the one that drew the fourth closet, which is still the best graphic novel. My personal favorite is still To Be Beautiful, I have to say, but in terms of like the whole books, the fourth closet takes it. The fourth closet is the best one, like, even for someone who doesn't care about the graphic novels, you should get this one because it is really good. And Corin McPherson is the artist for The New Kid, and with all the previews that we have so far, I'm going to show a bit, it looks very decent, you know? I like the charm it has, and considering that this was drawn with a lot going on in her life, she had like two jobs I think, uh, she was graduating and all that stuff while doing this, that makes it impressive to me. And the fact that she drew the story in Collection 3 without any of that stuff, so she could be, could be invested in it, that makes me very curious. And if the story lineup is to be trusted with the cover lineup of the authors and illustrators, Diana Camero is going to draw a step closer, Esmeralda is going to draw Bunny Call, unfortunately, and Corinne McPherson is going to draw Hide and Seek. So yeah. Just a quick video I wanted to do on this cover because I think it's a really cool cover. It deserves attention and all. It's a much better improvement compared to the original cover, which was still pretty good to be fair. I was supposed to read Amatric Apocalypse from Tales of the Pizza Fix 4, so I'm going to do that now. And we're still waiting for a Cat Encyclopedia preview. But yeah. Thank you for watching and see you next time.